you've been under a little bit of heat recently for funding uh, documentaries about the oil sands. Um, and I had wondered if you had some commentary about that <laughs> without, without the pundits <laughs> jumping in. Well, uh, you know, we, we funded an anti-oil sands movie. The, the, the guidelines at the time and the guidelines as they stand today say if you've got a, a movie, you've got an Alberta crew, you've got an Alberta location, Alberta store, you get a percentage of your production dollars back and that's they filled out that criteria. And we're not in the job of censorship and I know under people get really upset because our bread and butter is oil and gas. We know that. It's it made us a very wealthy province. But at the same time, you've got to remember there's a balance there and if you can't be too afraid to allow somebody to have a contrary view. Now the argument is whether we should be funding that, that's a whole different thing. I think as we move forward, as we become more competitive and as we look to a tax incentive that is going to be focused uh, around the private sector involvement as opposed to just government involvement, I think the cream will rise to the top and people will put the money into the projects that they deem worthy, meaning on a commercial basis, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move, a, move from that. But at this particular point in time, we're not there yet. So it's a bit of a sticky wicket, and I will have to stand up there and be flogged publicly if we uh, if we continue to uh, to flog to promote these but again it's only been a couple out of hundreds and uh, it's too bad that people don't focus on the quality work that we have like you mentioned we have three particular um, series shooting in Alberta Blackstone also up in in Edmonton and we've got some other great films and do they have you know Passchendaele when it came out and and was uh, and it was actually in a theater because it's so rare that you get a theatrical release for a Canadian film, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we should be looking at that and how we do better, how do we support it, how do how do we tell our stories better? That's the kind of questions we really need to be asking ourselves. But unfortunately, it's just a sensationalism that sells tabloids or sells the newspapers, and that's what they jump on. Maybe it will make the documentary more popular. Well, <laughs> it is going to make the documentary more popular, and you know, it's like people know. Wow, I haven't seen it. I'm going to go watch it. So by the people who are complaining the most about it, they've just heightened the awareness even more and uh, made it more saleable. So. We are an online publication, and we um, we look for support from you know the Canadian film industry, particularly because we are our interest is in promoting Canadian films, um, and I'm finding that there's an enormous amount of uh, you know um, funding and care and consideration towards um, the, the building of and development of projects, but a very little amount of support towards promoting Canadian films and having their presence out there, and particularly on newer mediums like online. Um, so Alberta's been a huge supporter for us in that regard, and I wanted to know kind of what, uh, you know, is that part of the innovation that you were talking about earlier? When I talk to people in the United States, and you talk to whether it's a producer or a studio, when they go to a project, by the same time they're, they're picking a script, they're picking the director, but they've also got their marketing plan. They are their distribution model already set. What happens in Canada too often is we go into production, the, the project is already in the can, and then we go to look for a market. And I think we, and we spend very little dollars on marketing, um, and we spend all our money on the production part of it. And I think there's where we, there's a disconnect there. And for us, um, we're, we've got to start looking at that and talking to other jurisdictions and the federal um, counterparts, and how do we look at doing that? When I said last week in uh, one of the newspapers, we've got to look at what we f fund and how we fund it. And part of that should be uh, uh, looking at marketing. And I think uh, we found in our department, by trying to promote culture within Alberta, doing it through the internet, doing it online, it's very cost effective. So when uh, we found out about this project, it made sense. And we thought, you know, it's, you can pay lip service to it, but if you don't put some money into the game, then you're really just another bystander with a big mouth. And um, so we, uh, Alberta Film was happy to be a, um, a contributor to it because it makes sense and it's doing it in a very cost-effective way and we need to be able to tell our stories. <laughs> we need to tell our stories about our stories. Because yeah. many people don't even know about most of the Canadian films that are even produced. They just they don't get heard and um, they don't get covered. And uh, so any way we can do that, enlighten that, I think is... is that's a positive move. Well, we find it a challenge. We find, you know, promoting Canadian films equally challenging. So it's always nice when we do find, you know, particularly 
the government finding an interest in that. Well, and you're absolutely right. Just like we were talking about marketing, the way that we look at film and television digital from a business perspective in Canada is different than the, than the States. And so private investment, people go, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, unless they're guaranteed they're going to get uh, the, the blockbuster, they're not interested. Um, but you can make money off of, uh, of a $10 million movie. You can make money off a $2 million movie. But if you create a fund, like they have in Louisiana, for instance, a $150 million fund, and um, you get uh, private investors to put their money in, and you give them a rate of return. And we're saying somewhere between 30 and 50 percent. Well, that 50 percent, that's revenue foregone from us because it's, um, we're going we're gonna to give that back to the individual. But that money is more than made up by what's generated in terms of economic activity. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be employing people. who are going to be paying taxes. They're going to be uh, using hotels. They're going to be using uh, the different companies for props. They're going to, they're going to, you know, the restaurants. All those things, the ancillary spin-off from it, more than equals that. Plus, people take a certain pride when they have ownership in something like that. We in in Calgary, when you find a movie that's going on. And one of these oil and gas executives, they're always trying to get their kids in the movie. So, you know, they, they love that cachet. And people want to know that Brad Pitt's in town filming. They want to know that uh, there's a, a hit going on. Exactly. Yeah. So you, 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 you tap into that. It's just like, you know, your professional sports franchise. If you could own a little piece of that, this is what you, the opportunity you give them. And, um, and you give them a decent rate of return. I mean, as the guys from... Well, in some of the studios I talked to in the States, I said, we would be on a plane the very next day because it's a different way of doing things. And the other thing that Canada has going for it is we have sound financial system, banking system, and, and governments. We're not in the same precarious financial picture that they have in the States. So when you go and sign a tax credit deal in the States now, that sounds fine, but if you do what they had in New Mexico and all of a sudden say, well, we're going to reduce our t tax credit by 40%, and you've already got a deal financed. You've got a deal on, on, on the, in the line ready to go. Now you're going to have to go back to the, the hedge fund or your financier, who, financier, whoever that is, and try to get that money. And it's really hard to do. And we're stable. And if we can find an incentive plan that gets that private sector money, one, it eliminates the censorship problem. You get um, people deciding what, what movies are worthy of filming or what projects are, gonna, are worthy of filming. And um, I think we just increased the amount of production here significantly. And that would be good for Alberta, obviously. But if we could get that to happen in Ontario and British Columbia and the rest of the country, I think, you know, a whole lot of different things will happen. We've got so many talented Canadians. Just imagine if we had the ability financially to say, hey, come and do this here. Create it here. Produce it here. Distribute it here instead of having to do it in the States. And we're not there yet. But if we did that, we would knock their socks off. And we're not that far away from that. I no, I no, no. But I mean, like we were saying before, um, look at TIFF. Think about TIFF 10 years ago. Look at Banff. I mean, these, these festivals rank on an international scale. When they're mentioned the same breath now as Khan. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. And we've got, we've got the, some of the very best producers, some of the very best directors, some of the very best actors, some of the very best crew in the world working in Los Angeles, working worldwide from Canada. So it's so easy to, to be able to do it here for ourselves. It's just getting those financial levers in place to be able to keep them here. And on that note, thank you very much for your time, and we really appreciate well, it. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, enjoy the rest of TIFF.